quick, tell me your top five martial arts for self-defense. I bet you're gonna say something like Krav Maga, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Combat Sambo, maybe Muay Thai or boxing if you think you're clever. These are all good choices to be sure, but they also make up the bulk of most best martial arts lists on YouTube. There are plenty of styles that don't make the invite to the cool kids table, but will still do you just fine in a self-defense situation. So in this video, we're gonna talk about my top five most underrated martial arts for self-defense. There's this overwhelming attitude on martial arts YouTube that I'm at least partially responsible for, where if a martial art doesn't do well in the cage, it's not worth practicing. But there's a difference between a martial art that is proven to be bad at fighting versus a martial art that is underrated for fighting. The list that follows probably won't make you UFC champ. But if you're trying to learn how to defend yourself against an untrained or honestly even moderately trained attacker, this will do you pretty well. And I wanna say right now, I'm talking strictly about hand-to-hand -hand fighting martial arts. I haven't made a single choice based on weapons usage because I don't think you have to train with weapons for self-defense and I'll explain that later on. With all that out of the way, let's talk about my first pick which is Muay Chaya. Now you're probably familiar with the term Muay Boran and can probably assume that Muay Chaya is a similar but different style. And you're right, but you're also wrong. Muay Boran is an umbrella term the same way Kung Fu is. It actually refers to any Thai martial art that isn't the sport of Muay Thai. Now with that history lesson out of the way, there are actually some technical reasons that I'm picking Muay Chaya. First of all, in a lot of ways, it checks off the same boxes as Muay Thai. It covers punching, kicking, elbowing, and kneeing. But because Muay Chaya is more or less a bare knuckle style, it approaches striking very differently. It has a very unique approach to defense that focuses on injuring the attacker while they attack you. Now this isn't unique to Muay Chaya by any means. We have styles like Wing Chun, 52 Blocks, and Kali that also use blocking methods that injure the attacker. But what I like about Muay Chaya is that it pairs this defense with the powerful strikes of Muay Thai. In boxing gloves, the high guard defends you from pretty much every attack your opponent can throw, at your head at least. But Take away the glove, and now your opponent has a much smaller, much sneakier weapon, and you have virtually no shield. But something I want to make clear about Muay Chaya, and really all the choices I made for this video, while all these styles stand on their own, they also do really well when paired with one of the more popular styles. So, if you're learning Muay Chaya, the best way to put it into practice is to also learn Muay Thai and take your blocks to your sparring. But be careful with your partner, make sure you don't break their fist. But now, let's talk about a grappling option. Let's talk about Shuai Zhao. Shuai Zhao is a form of Chinese folk wrestling that focuses on brutal takedowns and trips to pin your opponent to the ground. Knowing how to displace and control another human being's weight until you put them on the ground is one of the most important fundamentals to have for self-defense. But the real reason I picked Shuai Zhao is because it's the closest it's ever gonna come to living in a kung fu film. Now look, I love Kung Fu. Praying Mantis, Hungar, Wing Chun, these styles are awesome, but when it comes to fighting, they all fall kind of short. But with Shuai Zhao, the proof is in the pudding. If you say you're able to trip someone, you can do it slowly or you can do it full speed. If you're trying to teach someone how to do a single arm shoulder throw, you either can do it or you can't. Because listen, I can understand not being able to practice full power throat punches. I can understand not being willing to break your partner's thumbs every time you train with them. So Shuai Zhao provides a way for Kung Fu to express itself at more or less 100% intensity that doesn't also risk maiming the attacker, which means the it's too dangerous to spar rule doesn't apply here. While we're talking about it, that's also something we have to consider. As much as you want to believe that self-defense means doing whatever you want to make sure you go home, that's not always true. Legal ramifications aside, do you have what it takes to throat punch your brother until he stops moving? Or to eye gouge your wife who's having an emotional breakdown? I didn't think so. And this is why I think Shuai Zhao and wrestling as a whole is such an important base to have for self-defense. Because most of the time, you're not fighting to the death, you're fighting until someone calms down. So if you have the option to avoid doing serious bodily harm, you probably should. Unless of course you do have to do serious bodily harm, in which case do lots and lots of harm. Moving right along, let's talk about a martial art that I think pairs very well with Shuai Zhao, 
specializes in a very niche but very important part of self-defense and has some of the most dynamic, exciting strikes in all of martial arts. If you're a fan of the channel, you know what I'm going to say because I'm talking, of course, about Hapkido. Hapkido is a Korean martial art that combines the high-flying kicks of Taekwondo with the stand-up grappling from Aiki Jiu-Jitsu, creating a dynamic, explosive martial art whose athletes are able to fly across the floor with their kicks, but also understand the technical finesse of stand-up grappling. At the same time, I have to recognize there are some shortcomings to Hapkido. Hapkido, like other martial arts in the Do family, mostly relies on striking sparring to get their practice in. And this is where I think things go wrong. Yes, kicking is a big part of Hapkido's training, but punching and head movement certainly isn't. However, the other half of Hapkido training is stand-up grappling. So, I think clinch sparring should make up the majority of Hapkido sparring. A type of practice where the fighters are encouraged to use the throws and takedowns they're doing in their training and only strike if they're holding onto each other or once they break from the clinch. Which, by the way, is the best time to throw a spinning kick. Keep that in mind. But this video isn't about how I'm going to fix Hapkido. This video is about praising Hapkido as it is right now. Because yes, Hapkido won't turn you into a UFC heavyweight champion. But you know what it will do? It'll teach you a very effective, very efficient way of removing somebody who's holding on to your wrist. But Rob, in a real fight, no one's going to grab your wrist and just stand there. And you're right. Most people aren't just going to grab a wrist in the middle of a street fight, but they will grab onto a wrist or a collar before the fight happens. Whether we're talking about a man trying to drag a woman away or a guy getting ready to sucker punch somebody else at the bar, they're going to try and grab control of them first before they make their next move. And it's in this moment that Hapkido really shines. Can these techniques sometimes get needlessly complicated? And should Hapkido maybe incorporate a little more aliveness in their training? Yeah, possibly. But knowing how to protect yourself from wrist, arm, and collar grabs is one of the most important things you can do for self-defense. So we've talked about one of my favorite martial arts, but now let's talk about one that you might assume is my least favorite, but I actually really enjoyed when I got to train it. I'm talking about Panantukan. Panantukan is the empty hand expression of Filipino martial arts. Similar to Muay Chaya, it focuses on an aggressive defense that hurts the attacker as they hurt you. But unlike Muay Chaya, Panantukan places a great emphasis on limb destructions, which while the jury is still out on if these things actually work in a real fight, they are fun to practice. But the big difference I think between Muay Chaya and Panantukan is their mindset when it comes to fighting. Muay Chaya is a very deeply rooted, immovable martial art. You're going to use one or two blocks followed up by one or two strikes done with full force meant to put your opponent on the ground. Panatukan, by contrast, is an explosive in-your-face style of striking, meant to hit the opponent a thousand times before they have a chance to hit you back. At the same time, it took the footwork, head movement, and training methodologies from Western boxing, so now it has the best of that world, and combined it with the anything goes mentality of Filipino martial arts, resulting in an extremely powerful, extremely deadly form of empty hand striking. Now, if you do this in a boxing gym, you'll probably get thrown out, but practice some of the limb destructions and the traps and the sweeps in MMA or kickboxing, and you'll see how effective this martial art can really be. Now this last martial art will most definitely come as a surprise to you, but stick with me. Because I think the most underrated martial art for self-defense is point karate. Now, I hear you, I get it, I've said it myself, point karate isn't representative of real fighting, it doesn't teach you how to fight in the cage, blah 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 blah. I get it, point karate isn't about fighting. But neither is self-defense. Like with Hapkido, if you're looking to take on Islam Makhlashev in a five round fight, point karate is not the way to go. But if you're looking for one or two dependable moves that can help you in the situation you're most likely to find yourself in, point karate is not the worst option. Specifically, if we're talking about the worst piece of self-defense advice, which is just run away. Listen, do you know how hard it is to run away if you don't actually practice running away? It's not easy. And yes, avoiding violence whenever you can is important. We get that. But I don't know if you know this, most of the time, violent assault doesn't give you a choice. But one thing Point Karate is very good at is creating, taking, and maintaining distance. Yes, we all have the fantasy of dropping into our kukutsudachi and using our techniques to beat up the bullies and make our shidoshi proud, but 
Realistically, the best way you can use your point fighting is to use your explosive footwork to get the hell out of there or rush after them and hit them with that backbreaking sidekick or the back fist, whatever. I think point karate is a great underrated option for self-defense, but I also think we should stop saying just run away because that's like telling a drowning person, just get out of the water. It's useless advice. So those are my top five most underrated martial arts for self-defense. We have Shui Zhao and Hapkido for our wrestling base. We have Moi Chaya and Panantukan to add to our striking. And we have point fighting to help us get the hell out of that situation. Now, you might have noticed I didn't talk about martial arts that help you fight multiple attackers or to deal with weapons. First of all, let's see how you deal with one person in a consensual sparring session before we start worrying about two on one, three on one, whatever. But as for weapons, defending yourself from weapons is the exact same as defending yourself from empty hands. The consequences for failure are just more extreme. If you want to learn how to deal with a weapon, during one of your Shui Zhao training sessions, give your partner a plastic knife and tell them to stab you. Try to see if your techniques work. If they don't, go back to the drawing board. But that's my top five list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Comment down below. Let's get a discussion going. As always, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and share this video with a friend or an enemy. I don't care. Share it. As always, if you guys are looking to pick up some ex-martial swag, there's a link down there in my description. Click it. Save yourself 15% off your order. All that being said, this has been Rob from Combat Self-Defense. I want to thank you for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you next time.